uh, in the morning sessions, you heard about how OSI Soft has been um, preparing the Pi system and has been releasing new versions of it over the course of many years, and how the Pi system is a um, critical aspect of your data infrastructure, where your critical operations depend on it. Um, OSI Soft has been committed to releasing new versions and always including um, new improvements and fixes and always keeping it up to date. But at the end of the day, it is left to you to apply and implement those changes and keep your system up to date. And from what we've heard from you and from what we've seen, keeping the Pi system up to date is not that trivial. Um, the architecture of the Pi system has become more and more complex over the course of years. You have a lot of sites, a lot of assets, a lot of plants that you need to manage. You have a lot of other systems that you need to manage. There are third-party applications that are built on top of the Pi system. You need to make sure you only upgrade when there's a downtime, and all of these require a lot of testing. And those testing processes are not trivial. They're resource intensive. And we're all resource limited. So at the end of the day, we have seen you end up staying versions behind. You have to compromise when it comes to resources, and that compromise is a costly one. So at OSI Soft, we have been committed to keeping the Pi system up to date. We are focusing, we are starting some initiatives to make sure that your Pi system is up to date. So that while we keep the critical aspects of your operations going, we meet all of your data needs. So how are we going to fulfill that commitment? These are the three pillars of our software development when it comes to Pi system. The first one is hardening the core of the Pi system, where we focus on security and reliability. These are the two aspects that are non-negotiable when it comes to Pi system for your critical operations. You cannot compromise those two. The second one is easing the management and giving you more control over the deployments of your Pi system. And the third is extending the reach and expanding the value of your data. This is focusing on collecting the data, uh, giving all of, your, you, all of the users, no matter where they are and what their data needs are, giving them access to your data, and being able to integrate your data with whatever other systems that you need to have in place and play with and work with in order to get your projects done. That third bucket is where the innovation happens, where all of your initiatives and projects and business activities get done. Before getting into more details of all of these uh, three buckets, let me um, explain what I mean when I say uh, the, the core of the Pi system. This is an overview. Those of you who are familiar with the Pi system, this slide uh, is familiar to you. This is an, an overview of some of the main pieces of the Pi system, on your on-premise Pi system. When it comes to upgrading any of these pieces, you need to do a lot of testing and validation. The core of the Pi system is where those testing and validation rules are the most strict. That is where you cannot tolerate much of downtime, if any. The core of the Pi system is the heart of your Pi system. From what we have seen from a lot of you, and you can think of your own installation, your uh, Pi system, and see where that core is. But from what we have seen in reality, the core of the Pi system is Pi server and the data collection aspects, especially the Pi interfaces. So throughout this talk, when I refer to uh, the core of the Pi system, I'm referring to Pi server and Pi interfaces. So the first aspect was hardening the core of the Pi system. Focusing on security and reliability and being committed to sharing improvements and releasing improvements when it comes to security and reliability of the Pi server has been our focus for many years. This is not something new. But we have always been including it with a lot of other aspects, a lot of other improvements. So you were never, for, for a lot of times, you were not able to keep up with all of those changes. For Pi Server 2018 SP2, the security and reliability improvements have been our sole focus. This is the most reliable and most secure Pi Server that we have released to date, and it was released yesterday. And you can rely on us 
for supporting this version of the Pi server, the 2018 SP2, for many years for only those absolutely required changes and fixes to your Pi system. Things that are critical, those non-negotiable aspects that I was talking about. Those are gonna be fixing critical software bugs and also security vulnerabilities. The other aspect of the core of the Pi system were Pi interfaces. Uh, you saw when Abbas was talking about uh, our Pi interfaces, there were um, about six, seven of them that were the most popular Pi interfaces. For those Pi interfaces, we are having the same development approach and we're gonna support them for fixing the critical issues and um, security bugs and security vulnerabilities. Another thing that we recently added to our Pi interfaces, and it's a work in progress, is adding a native capability for Pi interfaces to uh, emit uh, health data. You're already, if you're familiar with Pi interfaces, we already have Uniant Health. This one is going to use the OSI soft messaging format. And the capability that comes with it is that those OMF, uh, OMF the OSI, uh, OSI soft message format, health data of the Pi interfaces will be, you can send it simultaneously to both your on-premise Pi server and OSI soft cloud services, OCS. And that on-premise Pi server can be something different from where your uh, production data goes to and where the interfaces send that data. Now that we're talking about Pi server and how uh, we have, what our focus has been for Pi server 2018 SP2, let's take a moment and look at the Pi server roadmap. Um, on the developing now side, for those of you who were not here during Abbas and Chris's talk, when uh, we have updated our approach to um, our roadmap and we are sharing with you what it is in the works and either was very recently released or soon is gonna become available to you, those are in the developing now bucket. Then we have considering next and researching future. Those are more into the future, things that we are looking into, some of them we have prioritized and we're gonna allocate resources to work on them. Some of them we're still looking into them. There are some of our focuses, but we have not detailed out how we're gonna implement them when it comes to a specific product. For Pi Server, as I told you, the focus on security reliability that has been going on for a long time, but for this last release, that was one of the main focuses, and we did a lot of quality updates to Pi Server, a lot of bug fixes, working on performance, on usability, on reliability, that has been the main focus. Those two aspects that you see, they were released with Pi Server 2018 SP2. Um, going forward, we're looking at how we can uh, give you uh, the updates to critical bugs and uh, security issues in the form of patches. I will talk about that in a second. So that while you keep your Pi Server up to date on the critical aspects, you don't have to allocate any more resources and you can put your resources where your projects need to get done. As far as what is next, we are looking at more performance improvements and uh, when it comes to having multiple clients uh, connecting uh, to your Pi server, and when I talk about Pi server, I'm talking about all those aspects of it, data archive, AF, um, um, analytic, uh, analysis service, all of that. And having it, you, you heard Greg's talk in the morning, having a more manageable system is one of our main focuses in our uh, software engineering, not just when it comes to Pi Server in general. We want to make it more manageable. We want to make it more deployable, easily deployable, uh, when it comes to all aspects of the Pi system, and Pi Server is one of them. The second bucket was easing the management. So easing deployment, improving manageability. How are we doing that? We have a few uh, new initiatives that are ongoing. The first one is that for Pi Server 2018 SP2 going forward, we're gonna uh, give you um, some updates to the security, to critical bugs and to security issues. And we're gonna release them in the form of a patch. It's not gonna be a full upgrade. What does that mean? So when it comes to applying these patches, that patch will only touch that area that had a bug identified. It's not gonna to touch anywhere else. And we are also, if it's related to a critical bug, we, are clear, we will cre clearly document that for you so that you will know exactly what changed. And that will help you in assessing it, testing it, and then applying it, deploying it into your own environment. 
When it comes to security issues, of course, we cannot disclose all of the details. We have uh, some disclosure, uh, a disclosure policy that we're going to follow those rules in sharing with you what has been changed and what uh, uh, the uh, fixes have been applied to. The second uh, one, end-to-end -end test the scripts across Pi system, that's a new initiative. That's something that you have been asking us. We have, uh, we're trying to make it easier for you to deploy new, the updates to your Pi system, and especially when it comes to your Pi server, but even a patch needs to be tested. And a lot of you have asked us for the support. Where should I start? What are the things that I should be testing for? We are the makers of the Pi system, so we are the subject matter experts to tell you what aspects should be tested. These are all about the Pi systems. When it comes to your third-party applications, you are the subject matter experts in the room. But for Pi system, we started looking at, all right, we need to provide some support and help to all of you to be able to assess every upgrade, every patch application. We started looking at a test framework and a, a set of uh, scripts. These are a subset of the scripts that our development team uses every time we do um, any development internally. You will be able to use them for assessing every Pi server upgrade, uh, for applying patches, maybe even for Patch Tuesday, um, any changes that happens to the underlying OS or other um, software that you have running. And the third one is, all right, we have the uh, patches in place, the Pi server 2018 SP2 is in place, uh, we now have test the scripts, not all of you have a test environment in place. Um, one thing that we are, we are working on is having some deployment templates and some installation scripts combined together that will help you. Uh, one use case of it is uh, spin up a test environment in a cloud platform and be able to tear it down once your testing is done. So it will help you, give you some uh, support in quickly spinning up an environment, a test environment, a development environment. You can use it for proof of concept. Uh, the cloud platforms that we're uh, working on to support for the first version um, are going to be the Amazon Web Services, AWS, and Microsoft Azure. These are gonna be bring your own Pi uh, server license, bring your own subscription of these cloud platforms. Uh, bring your own install kits, but we have automated a lot of manual steps that you need to follow in order to spin up these environments, in order to run the scripts. It's going to do the silent installation of the Pi server for you. It's going to do everything, and it's automated. The last bucket is extending the reach and expanding the scope of your data. This is where we are heavily investing on, and this is where most of your resources should be spent on, from your team members, from your time. This is where the innovation happens. Uh, our boss and Chris talked about the data collection and how we are working on expanding uh, where the data can be collected and be brought in either into Pi system, to cloud, wherever you want it. Visualization, uh, giving you more insight about it. You will hear a talk from Brian, um, the next talk after the break. Developer technologies, we are working hard so that we add more and more capabilities into the developer technologies so that you can uh, build more applications and be able to give your users access to the data that you have in the Pi system. For integration, we are invested in giving you capabilities so, you, so that you can do advanced analytics uh, with the suite of integrated products that we have. And the seamless of infrastructure that is going from edge to Pi system to uh, the cloud, so that wherever your data is, this is a seamless and the same experience for you as the user. Now, when we talk about hardening the core of the Pi system, easing the management, one question that I've heard is, where do I get my features from? And one of the features that I hear a lot is analytics. In general, talking about analytics, we can put it in maybe three uh, different uh, categories. One is simple or complex calculations, like doing KPIs, percent uptime of a unit, uh, overall efficiency. That's something that Pi Server uh, already provides a lot of capabilities for doing this type of analytics. The second type is visual correlation. Maybe that overall efficiency of the equipment, you want to do a comparison on it over a course of year for each month and see how it has been changing. Maybe for um, total power consumption of different assets, you want to review them and see if you see any abnormalities there. Our uh, visualization suite of products provide a lot of 
uh, capabilities there. And the third one, which has come up during the recent years, uh, is tied to machine learning, business uh, intelligence. Uh, there's a lot of hype around it. So for that, I will let um, my colleague Joy come on stage and share more information what OSI Soft has to offer for advanced analytics there. Hi everyone, my name is Joy Wang and I'm one of the technical product managers at OSI Soft. Whoops. So speaking of advanced analytics for critical operations, it is a journey for our customers and everyone is at different stages. And I'd like to just take some time to take a deeper look at the four main milestones of advanced analytics for critical operations. So the first is descriptive analytics, or what is happening. This is understanding that real-time process and having a real-time look on your plant floor. And so once you have that real-time visibility, what you can go into next is diagnostic analytics, or why is it happening? So why do some batches produce better yields? Why does one substation have more downtime than the others? at this site. And once you have that, then you can start to understand the inputs and predictive analytics. What's likely to happen? So identifying those inputs that generate a certain outcome, desirable or undesirable, is the next stage. And finally, when you have all this information, you can go on to prescriptive analytics. For a certain desired outcome, what is the set of instructions that I need to implement. And so with all of this, these four milestones, what's happening, why is it happening, what's likely to happen, and what do I need to do? Sounds pretty simple, right? Four prong step approach. Well, the challenge is our customers are lost, lost between their data and the overwhelming amount of tools that they have. And in between that, all these best practices and they start asking questions like, how do we get started? Which cloud platform? Where do I find a data scientist? What data do I need? How do we scale? What am I even doing? And so fortunately, the good news is at OSI Soft, our aim is to support the ever evolving needs of advanced analytics for critical operations data. How do we do this? by providing a set of easy to use tools that shorten the time to value for your projects. What tools are these? They are the Pi integrators. So Pi integrators speed the process that brings trustworthy data to many unique analytics tools. Let's unpack this for a moment here, this three-prong statement. What does speed the process mean? Well, for start, it's an easy, self-hosted web service with a configuration UI and a three-step process to prepare your system operations data for analysis. Uh, and it's a very iterative process and encourages iter iterative processes because if you find that if you need additional features, if you're doing some feature engineering or you'd like a different interpolation, you can go right back, do your modifications, and publish again. How does it bring trustworthy data? By inheriting data and context directly from your Pi system. So this means that you have that context layer and it is automatically synced with the Pi system to provide the latest updates that uh, are in your data set. And lastly, the many unique analytics tools. So as you can see here, we support a wide variety of tools and this isn't even all of them. And this enables you to have a vendor agnostic, low risk approach to your advanced analytics. And you're not stuck in the analysis paralysis of which tool should I use? You can get started with all, any of them. I wanted to bring it back to this slide, the one that Mana showed earlier, which encompasses the Pi system, our enterprise data infrastructure. And as you can see here, I wanna show where Pi integrators are along that enterprise data infrastructure. So it, it is one of the many client tools that we offer for the Pi system. 
So now you might be wondering, well, what tools are exactly available to me today? Well, if you are, here is our cheat sheet. As you can see here, this is uh, all of the, the three soft pieces of software that we offer today and the tools that it connects to. On the right-hand side here, we'll start with the Pi integrator for Esri ArcGIS 2017 SP1. Uh, so it offers connectivity to ArcGIS GeoEvent server to enable geospatial analytics and putting your operational data on a map layer. Additionally, not pictured, it also includes uh, connecting to ArcGIS online. So if your team uses Esri, chances are we have an architecture that, that is supported. Next, in the middle here, let's talk about the Pi integrator for SAP HANA. So this one, as you can see, has uh, integration with smart SAP HANA smart data integration as well as SAP streaming analytics. Uh, so if your organization uh, has SAP HANA as your platform, there's a plethora of connection options uh, for analysis and data preparation. And finally, the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics 2018 R2. As you can see, it has a plethora of tools that are available for integration. And I'd like to highlight just really quickly our latest release, which was last November, where we offered broad support for Amazon Web Services. And so if you do use Amazon Redshift, their data warehouse offering in the cloud, uh, we have connectivity for that. And if your team likes to analyze unstructured files, uh, we have Amazon S3. And finally, if you have a streaming use case, uh, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams would be another solution for you. All right, and here's the exciting part. What's on the roadmap for this year? So as Mana has already explained, we have grouped it into three buckets. The developing now, where our engineering uh, team is actively working, considering next, work that maybe is pretty well understood in scope and maybe already prioritized, uh, but just not working on right right now. And we can still, we'd be happy to take your input. And researching in the future where we really would like to hear about your use cases and input. So I'm not going to cover this in, in depth because we do have a day three talk where I will speak to the roadmap um, more directly as well as a live demo. But on the developing now section, we are revamping the Pi integrator for SAP HANA. It's getting a facelift as well as a backend cleaning as well. And so it'll be updated to with the latest Pi integrator framework, which includes all the UI enhancements and fixes that are available in uh, business analytics integrator as well. And additionally, there will be a change in architecture to support uh, Apache Kafka, which, will, which can connect to SAP HANA streaming analytics. And then on the bottom there, the Pi integrator for Esri ArcGIS, we are, adding, we are having resources to ensure the full compatibility with the latest releases of Esri ArcGIS Enterprise. Considering next Google Cloud platform integration, if you have use cases for Google Cloud, please come talk to us. Uh, right now what we're looking at is one streaming writer and one batch writer, but we would love to hear more about your use cases as we finalize our direction. And researching the future, MathWorks MATLAB integration. So last year, you may have seen our talks uh, that show MATLAB integration for Pi AF and Asset Analytics. Since then, we have learned more, and we are now looking into solving similar use cases with the Pi integrator. And so if you are using MATLAB or your team does, or you foresee a use case, please, please come talk to us at the booth. We would love to get in touch with you. Speaking of the booth, so you have so many resources for anything and all things Pi integrators related this week. The product booth is the data science enablement umbrella, and that is at the Yosemite Ballroom. And you can speak with our product specialists and developers uh, to learn more and share your use cases and ideas. We do have a product talk, Insight Pi Integrators and OSISOV Cloud Services. And that is the deep dive on day three, where we will have demos and go deeply into uh, the offerings. And that is at 11.30 AM. And finally, if you haven't signed up for any of the labs already, uh, they are here and they will be available all year round via our virtual lab uh, environment.
can skip the, the slide. Um, also for the Pi system for critical operations, there were a lot of uh, topics that I mentioned. We have a booth, Pi system for critical operations. If you want to learn more about um, the testing uh, scripts that I talked about, do stop by the booth. If you want to lear uh, learn about the um, health of the Pi interfaces, um, uh, do stop by the booth. If you, in general, want to know more about uh, Pi Server 2018 SP2. We have three dedicated booths for Pi Server. You can stop by there. There are a lot of booths that you can go and talk to the teams who developed all of these products. Um, other talks, if you're interested in the deployment scripts for AWS and Azure, uh, we have a um, tech talk tomorrow. 90 minutes, two um, of our colleagues are going to show you a full demo of how these uh, deployments are done. Uh, we have, as Joy mentioned, on day three, we have product talks that we share more details with you. Um, and also, there is a lab for um, the deployment scripts for AWS. If you haven't signed up, check it out and see if there is still a spot available. In general, in our uh, products, um, in our development, in our engineering, uh, we uh, prioritize our roadmap based on the feedback we get from you. And we have, if you're not familiar with it, we have a feedback portal, feedback.osisoft.com. If you have requests, if there are things you want to see on any of our products, make sure to visit this, this site and make sure, either if your idea is not there, make sure to create it. A lot of users already have created a lot of ideas. Make sure you vote uh, those ideas that you like and uh, support those. This way, we will learn from from you and know what are the aspects of different products that you want to see. This is how we prioritize. Um, so make sure feedback.osisoft.com, as we say it, if it's not shared on the feedback portal, it didn't happen. So make sure we hear your voice. Uh, with that, uh, thank you uh, very much for your time. Uh, there's a 30-minute break. Uh, if you have any questions, Joy and I are going to stay in the room. Come see us in front of the room. Um, otherwise, stop by the booths and ask any questions you have. Enjoy the rest of your pie world. Thank you.